Today we visit the Chinese cemetery here in Ashcroft. In the very early days of Ashcroft, land was set aside by the CPR for a cemetery for the Chinese. The burial sites of the Chinese were very important to them. Honoring one's ancestors begins with proper position of a grave site and coffin. Finding the right location is determined according to feng shui. Feng means wind and shui means water. In Chinese culture, wind and water are both associated with good health. Feng shui is essentially the interaction of humans and their environments. Some of the important elements of a feng shui gravesite were a south-facing opening so that the life-giving force of the sun would have access and the presence of a winding body of water which symbolizes wealth and affluence. The fortunes of succeeding generations are believed to depend on the feng shui of their ancestors' grave. About 2002, the Ashcroft Cash Creek Rotary, along with the Ashcroft and District Lines, took an interest in the Chinese cemetery, which over the years had become neglected and overgrown with weeds. They corresponded with the CPR to try and get permission to access the land, and so it began. Over the next few years, the group, groups focused on the appearance of the graveyard. They would meet to pull weeds and rake. Several loads of white gravel were added, the gravel was donated as well as the equipment and operators that were required to haul the gravel and place it. Red rock was also added to characterize each grave site. In 2012, a stone marker was placed in the cemetery, dedicated to the memory of the Chinese workers who helped build the Canadian Pacific Railway in British Columbia. A memory board was erected beside the site with pictures of and information about the Chinese community in Ashcroft. Two glass mosaics were added in 2016. One is this beautiful dragon as well as a bench with a glass mosaic backrest. Both of these mosaics were created by Marina Papai. The funds for the bench came from the Charles Sue family, a family that had been coming to Ashcroft for 40 years to visit their grandfather's resting place. While visiting, they would clean up the gravesite and make offerings to the spirits of the dead by such traditions of lighting jaw sticks and candles burning paper money, and providing food. A recent addition is a new headstone for their grandfather, designed and constructed by Pache Dennis at a request by the family. These beautiful mosaic headstones were also created and put on each of the unmarked graves. Many of these were created by Marina and Patricia and Pache Dennis. In 2017, several dignitaries and visitors gathered at the site to unveil an altar. This altar was created through consultations between the Lions and Rotary Clubs. Marina Papias and husband Daniel Collette were behind the designs of the altar and the etchings. The altar contains a plaque that acknowledges the apology made by the BC government for the hardship and suffering that was imposed on the Chinese community. In this graveyard, there are about 54 visible grave sites. I'm not sure when the first internment took place, probably in the late 1800s. The Chinese believed that if people died in a distant land, their souls would wander until they were reburied in their home village where close, close relatives could look after their graves. For those that died unexpectedly in this foreign land of Canada, the responsibility of caring for the remains fell on the shoulders of various cl Chinese clans and community organizations. After seven years of rest in these graves, the bones would be exhumed, cleaned, and dried for shipping, and then in many cases stored at a location until sufficient bones were gathered for a mass shipment back to their home country. The first collective shipment to China took place in 1909. These shipments continued every seven years until the outbreak of the Sino-Japanese War in 1937. So we are uncertain how many of these graves have remains in them. There are around seven grave sites that have original headstones. Some are in English, but the remainder are, are written in Chinese so Zhou Liang of Kamloops helped with the translation. Although the first Chinese burial in the public cemetery the, at the end of railway seems to have taken place in 1939, these headstones that are still remaining are from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Ashcroft over the years has had a large Chinese population and they contributed greatly to the economy and character of the town. They were hard workers, railway laborers, shopkeepers, clerks, restaurateurs, cooks, laundry owners, and farm laborers. 
Some of these men would have found their final resting place here. For others, it would be just a stop-off.